Um, <laughs> well, there, there's so much of the kind of mythology to get into. Um, I'm sure it's going to come up in some questions from the audience. Uh, what I've lately been, uh, in the re most recent episodes, most obsessed with and fascinated by is the ZFT manifesto, the destruction by advancement of technology. Uh, I felt der that... Störung durch Fortschritte mm. der Technologie. Uh, yeah, I, you, I should have had you read the German title of the show. So, um, it, this bioterrorist cell, it, with this German influence, it kind of reminds me of a techno version of the Bader Meinhof gang in a, in a certain way. I wondered where that, that manifesto, the idea for the manifesto, came from. What was the original thing? I think part of it was from studying one of Harvard's students who wrote a technological, technological manifesto that talked about you know, mind control and what was the morality of a technologically advanced society and its progress uh, and is an end in itself a dangerous thing to pursue you know, the way that uh, some primitive cultures remain the same. So it was very much off of kind of doing homework about the kinds of things that were going on at Harvard where the character of uh, Walter Bishop studied is in the 60s and 70s. And from that, we got this idea of what if, what if we made it seem as, as if Walter had written the, the Unabomber's Manifesto and it was this, this genuinely intellectual uh, attempt to grapple with technology, which is one of the themes of the show always. Uh -huh. Well, and, and I'm glad to hear you say that that about the 60s influence in someone of Walter's generation because I also f think that there's a very s strong uh, kind of strand of 60s radicalism slash utopianism slash millennialism to this sure. show yeah. um, and the way the counterculture of that period grappled with those issues and took if necessary violent action to stop things that they felt strongly about. And also the notion of questioning reality and questioning constructs and questioning authority, all things that, that Walter and William Bell were very much, you know, right place, right time for their minds and is, is everything that we perceive, is this the only reality? And, uh, you know, it's John. We, you, you, often John will feed us ideas like, oh, have you guys read such and such? Or it, it's very much of something that, that you feel strongly about, yes? Uh, certainly. Uh, I, I've observed that the, there is a, a, a genuine fascination by, by contemporary youth with what was, we call loosely the 60s, an absolutely genuine fascination with what was happening in the 70s in the minds of their now parents, perhaps grandparents. The music of the time is still phenomenal in terms of the effect it has on people. It was an amazing place to grow up and there was a, a, a mental freedom at that time that was unique. And as I say, I've seen this in youth. They still, what on earth happened then? You know, it didn't sustain. I mean, they grew into old, older people like me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, was, it was an extraordinary time and it was a time of uh, amazing potential where youth believed that the world could be changed. They believed that they could shift ideas that were entrenched in society and, and in fact did in a massive way. That's why it's so appealing, Ken, and that's why we go back to it, and I'm sure that's why audiences are relating, for example, to Walter. The older folks say, yes, I remember. Because he hasn't grown old, he stayed young in his mind. And then the younger people are saying, that's sort of really cool yeah, to be there. I, I don't know anything more than anybody else does about, I've just seen the shows as they're airing, but it's obviously been announced that Leonard Nimoy is going to make an appearance in the finale. Is Walter's former, present, future partner, part, I should say partner, but I don't know what. Lab. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, that's great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said with yeah, condition yes, in yes his voice. Is. Yes. <laughs> but uh, does it also kind of paint you in an immediate corner because people are savvy enough to know that Leonard Nimoy is not going to become sign on to become a regular character in the show and, and limit what you can do with that character? Uh, first of all, uh, you know, he hasn't signed up for just one episode. I won't talk about how many, or, but he's going to be on the show. This is what I was um, trying to get out of him. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, the thing about, we, you know, obviously working with, with Mr. Nimoy in Star Trek was an insane honor, and uh, he had we had this first meeting with him and pitched him a story for Star Trek, and uh, he Here's was... Here's what you've been doing. <laughs> what? 
That's what we pitched him. Like, we're going to pitch Spock. Oh, with I thought Spock you were talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Bob does that sometimes, I thought. I just jumped into character. I'm sorry. <laughs> so weird. Go ahead. Uh, alert me next time. I have sorry. no idea. You sorry. scare me. Sorry, Apologies. You scare me. Um, where was I, Bob? Oh, yes. Yeah, that is Leonard. scary first meeting. Yes, we, we pitched him this thing. And, and uh, and 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 he didn't commit to the the movie, but he was uh, it. yeah he was thoughtful about it, and so we were very lucky to actually get him to do that, and and um, and working with him was you know intimidating and also wonderful, uh, and I tend to work with the same people again and again and again, and that's Thank sort God. of you know, uh, <laughs> and um, <laughs> but honestly uh, it, it it didn't even occur to me that we would get. I would get to work with him again. I just thought that was an amazing honor, and that was it. And we were literally thinking about, you know, as we had been for quite a while, who could play <laughs> William Bell? He was in the pilot, the character. And and then one day, Brian Burke emails us, what about Leonard? And it was just one of those moments of just, you know, like, it, it was such an impossible dream to think that he, this legend, would come and, and you know, work with us on the show. And we, I called him up, I talked to him about it, he was interested. It was the same kind of thing as, as on Star Trek. He was considered it. We sent him the script. He loved the idea. And suddenly he was shooting the scene. And uh, we're honored to have him uh, as part of, uh, not necessarily regular, but as part of the cast of Fringe. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of which, he, he does the role. He, 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 he does the role, and, and we talked about it. And he came with these ideas that immediately made you realize, like, oh, now I get it. I understand why he and Walter were lab partners. He does it in a way that's kind of unexpected, and you go, oh my god, I, I now see why these two men were simpatico, were, were like-minded, even though one went into an insane asylum and one went on to be one of the richest men in America. I think I speak for us all when I say that this has been a wonderful season, and we really look forward to the end of the season Thank you. and next Thank season. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.